really cares if the government snoops on the lamestream media, right? The privacy concerns of journalists probably are not at the top of your list or even on your list at all. Well, this is all about what your government decides you're allowed to know and what you just can't handle. The Obama administration has indicted six people for leaking information that landed in the media's lap. Think that's not so many? Well, it's more than all previous administrations combined. And now, CNN can report some new developments in the saga threatening to engulf Attorney General Eric Holder. There's been this endless back and forth over what Holder knew or didn't know about his Justice Department's investigation into leaks made to Fox News reporter James Rose and Fox and its parent company, News Corp, have denied that the government told them it was subpoenaing the phone records of their reporter, Mr. Rosen. But CNN has just learned that the Justice Department did, in fact, notify News Corp's lawyer on August 27th, 2010, via certified letter. That's all a little confusing, I know. So we've invited CNN contributor Ryan Lizza from The New Yorker to sort out the timeline with us. Ryan, uh, thanks for being here. We're going to start, we're just going to focus on this one leak to James Rosen, yeah. and it starts on June 11th, 2009. What's the significance of this day? This is when James Rosen posts on Fox News' website a major scoop. He cites sources inside North Korea and reports what North Korea is likely to do in response to UN sanctions. And intelligence officials are very concerned about these four words. Why? That's it. He, uh, the intelligence community is outraged that Rosen has apparently found out that we have sources inside this hermetically sealed uh, North country, North Korea, very hard to penetrate. And that's why the, the government claims they go after this leak so hard. They went the very next day, June 12, 2009, trying to figure out who had access in the State Department to this classified information about North Korea. Uh, how did they figure out it was uh, Stephen Kim? This is where it gets interesting. So this report was uh, d disseminated uh, to a very small circle of people. The FBI finds out 95 intelligence, uh, 90 pe 95 people were allowed to view this document. They look at phone records. They look at ba security badge IDs coming and going at the State Department. They look at this gentleman, Stephen Kim Kim's uh, uh, computer. And they find out that of those 95 people that had access to this information, only one of them was in communication with Fox News' James Rosen. And were they able to determine that there was proof that he was looking at the information and sharing it well, with Rosen? They, they, they had this, I mean, they had this guy nailed, let's be honest. Uh, they have a record of a phone call between Rosen and Kim while Kim is logged into his computer looking at this report. Okay, so... Three hours later, James Rosen's piece gets posted on Fox News' website. So, throughout the summer of 2009, they're looking into Stephen Kim. They're investigating him. They're investigating him. him. They're looking at his hard drive. They're, taking, they're imaging it. They're, there are some more contacts between Rosen and Kim in the summer. In August, there's an email. Um, and they execute a search warrant for Kim's emails in November 2009. But then they take it a step further. And then it's in the spring of 2010 when they actually start going after James Rosen and yeah. investigating him. And here is where people get really worried. This is where this investigation jumps from a leak investigation of someone in the government who provided classified information into an investigation of a journalist and a, targeting a journalist. The government, in a search warrant for James Rosen's email, calls him an aider and a better and or co-conspirator in the crime of espionage. That's what has media watchdogs so outraged. They crossed a line that previous administrations have not crossed. And it suggests, if you read the, the search warrant, that they were at the very least considering the potentially indicting this person. For doing his job as a journalist. And yeah. who do we know? How high did this go up in the Justice Department? So we've only found out recently that Eric Holder himself, the attorney general, had to sign off on this very controversial search warrant of James Rosen's, James Rosen's private email. So let's flash forward. And we'll go to not that long ago, May 15th, 2013, Holder testifies before Congress. This is before the public knows about the warrant into James Rosen, the Fox News reporter. Yes. But after uh, Attorney General Holder has signed off on the warrant, and this is what he says when asked a question. With regard to the potential prosecution of the press for the disclosure of material, that is not something that... Um, I've ever been involved in, heard of, um, or would think would be a wise policy. In fact, my view is quite the opposite. This is a very controversial sentence he has yeah. now said in light of the news 
that he signed off on the Rosen warrant. Why? That's the statement we're going to, that has Republicans in this town furious. Republicans are now saying, if that, you, if if you went to a judge and asked for a search warrant for James Rosen's personal email, and you alleged to that judge that he was a criminal, well, that means you were thinking about prosecuting James Rosen. So. The House Judiciary Committee is now going after Holder. They wrote a letter today and asked him to explain the to explain how he uh, how, how he uh, how that statement that we just heard uh, doesn't contradict the search warrant he approved. And they have not uh, explained that. And this brings us to May 28th, 2013, in Politico's playbook. Uh, we yeah. get leaked, uh, or we didn't get leaked, Mike Allen from Politico yeah. is told, uh, Holder is meeting with bureau chiefs, including our own Sam Feist here in the CNN Washington DC bureau. What is Holder doing right now? So this is where I think you, you in, in Washington, this is how you know Holder thinks he's in a little bit of trouble. So he's leaked to Politico, he's leaked to the Daily Beast, or people around him have that he regrets the search warrant to James Rosen, that he wants to do things differently, and that this dialogue with the media bureau chiefs is a way to clean up the rules and regulations at the Justice Department and, uh, and, 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 and not go as far as, uh, as they went in the Rosen case. All right, so Ryan Lizza from The New Yorker, CNN contributor, thank you so much. Thanks, Jake.